fucking cold outside. But anyway, what has been going on with the bike? Well, obviously... That happened. And um, I sent it off to a mechanic I trust, John at GJD Motorcycles in Letchworth. If you're local, if you need something, he is a great bloke. He has helped me out so many times. Brilliant mechanic. Can't recommend that place highly enough. So I sent it, sent the bike to him. Well, he came, picked the bike up, and took it. Checked everything because I said, right, I know the damage I can see, but the way it bounced after it hit the curb. I've got frame sliders which rest up against the fucking frame of the bike which means if it hits hard enough to one side it could bend or crack the frame. So I sent it over to him to have a proper proper check over make sure everything's okay and he just dropped it off today which is why I'm fucking freezing because I'm just outside and in a minute you'll see why it's fucking freezing. But yes it is repairable. It's not a write-off. The frame is fine. The suspension is fine. Those are the two things I was worried about. The suspension is an expensive job that I wouldn't feel comfortable doing myself. I'd have to take that. I'd take it back to John and get him to do it, but obviously I'd have to pay the labour charge for that and the parts and that, that would hurt. So luckily that's fine. The frame, thank fuck the frame's okay because if you crack your frame, that's a write-off, straight away. And I'm not going through my insurance. I have an extortionate insurance quote, and the excess, again, is extortionate, and I don't... If I'm paying that excess, I might as well fix the bike myself and pay for everything. And in the long run, it will save me money, because claiming will up my insurance and blah, blah, blah. So, I'm doing it myself. So, let's talk about the damage you can see. Obviously, as you look at the front, the right mirror is missing. It didn't break the connector, it didn't rip any wires, so it doesn't need rewiring, thank fuck. Because again, I wouldn't want to do that. Did I say right mirror? I meant left. It was the left mirror. But yeah, the right mirror is there, but it's cracked and it's holding on by one bolt. So I need two new mirrors. By the way, right now I'm telling you all of the damage. We'll get into the stuff later. Yeah, I need two new mirrors. The bar end and my clutch lever are fucked, so I need new clutch lever, new bar end. The grips, they, I don't know how, but they're fucking ground down, so I need new grips. The crash bung did a fucking good job. I mean, it's worn down to about two thirds of the size it was, and there's not a mark on the fairing or anything, so thank fuck I had them, because if I didn't have them, my fairings would have cracked into pieces, they would have shattered. So, obviously, new crash bump, because I'm not sure if that will withstand another one of them. I don't plan on doing it again. Hope I don't do it again, but just in case, I need no one of them. Obviously, the rear set. No foot peg, no gear selector, so need new rear sets. Just below that is the side stand. The bit of metal that sticks out so you can put your heel on it and flip the side stand down while you sat on the bike. That's bent right round, so you have to be off the bike to put the side stand down. Not the end of the world, but I don't like that. If I trip, or if I stumble as I'm getting off the bike, if it's not got the stand down, the bike's coming with me and landing on me, probably. So, I don't want that. I don't know if I can bend that back in, like back into shape. If I can, I'll leave it. If I can't, new side stand. Obviously the pillion pegs, minimal damage to them, just a little, little scrape. Pillion seat, big scrapes. So again, new, pi new pillion, well, again, I could leave it. The pillion seat, I could leave how it is. But all of the damage, so pillion seat. Rear indicators, the left one's cracked. The number plate, pretty much snapped in half. And on the other side, Far end took a pound in, the lever's got a scrape on it. That's it. That's the damage. Now, if you notice just here, I've got a load of stuff written on my whiteboard. Because I did something clever. I know, right? <clears throat> clever. 
Give me one second. Right, on this whiteboard, I've obviously got KTM rebuilt, clearly. I don't actually know if you can see that on there, maybe, maybe just about. So yeah, split it into three sections, urgent, serious, and need slash one. The urgent stuff is what I need to get the bike back on the road and usable, because at the moment it's not. Obviously, rear sets have to be there. Mirrors, they don't have to be there, but I like having mirrors. I spend half my time looking at what's behind me, so mirrors for me is a must. Number plate, because without one they're kind of illegal. Uh, paddock stand, because the one I had was, well, that. Rear spools, spools, cotton reels, bobbins, whatever you want to call them. So I can use, instead of lifting the bike up from the uh, swing arm, that's the word, it can lift it up via the, via the spools. Then obviously the check and he did have a look at the brakes because they were pretty much solid. I mean, pushing the bike was painfully hard. So we gave them a service and they're good now. Well, obviously you've got to pay for that. Then obviously gloves as well, because I'll tore through my gloves. Right, that's everything on the urgent side. Obviously the price is there. I'm not going to tell you the price because this isn't about money. Serious, crash bungs. Not 100% necessary, but useful. Pillion seat, again, doesn't have to be there, but using it how it is with that scrape down the side, using that in the rain, that's going to start getting moldy. So. Obviously new pillion seat and a torque wrench. So I don't have one. And if I'm doing the work myself, I need a torque wrench. And now we go on to the need slash one. By the way, new number plate. Just point that out in case you haven't noticed the fucking yellow thing sat on top of the whiteboard. But yeah, need slash one. Levers, bar ends, grips, rear indicators, air filter, sounds weird, but bear with me on that. Air filter and a tail tidy. And obviously, refurbish the levers, maybe, maybe not, I don't know, I doubt it. Then a gazebo, bear with me. Work gloves, obviously, and an extension lead. Right, I'm gonna sit back down. So yes, that's everything that I will be buying, have bought, being replaced, all of that. So, let's start with the weird, the weird things now. Air filter, why, why do you need a new air filter? because when the bike's laying on its side and the rear wheel's spinning, it's pushing the oil around the engine. Nine times out of 10, that oil goes into your air fit, air fit, there, there, there. Nine out of 10 times, that oil goes into your air filter and fucks it. So, not 100% necessary, but I could do with it. So, no air filter. The really weird thing that I mentioned, a gazebo. I don't have a garage. It's fucking cold out there and it's going to be raining all of next week. So, where am I going to work on the bike? In a 3 by 9 metre gazebo with a space heater in it. I know, don't put a space heater in a gazebo, it'll catch fire. I'm not an idiot. I'm not going to have the fucking space heater up against the side of the gazebo. I'm going to have it fucking well away from everything. And extension lead obviously so I can run the fucking space heater up there and I want to listen to some music while I do it. So now let's move back on to the what I bought. Obviously rear sets, I could have bought standard rear sets but I've been considering buying fully adjustable rear sets from the KTM Power Parts range for quite a while and now I might as well because if I buy them later down the line I'll have spent around 150 quid on a, rear, on a set of rear sets and then 300 quid on a set of rear sets. What's the point? I might as well just save 150 quid and buy the expensive ones now. And the pillion seat as well. I was considering changing the pillion seat from obviously a seat to a carbon fiber thing. Can't think of the word. I always blank on that word. It's not a seat, but it's the cover for the back of the bike. What's the word? So I'll probably end up replacing the seat with one of them, which will mean taking the pillion pegs off and getting a hanging bracket for my exhaust, because there's no point having pillion pegs if you can't carry a pillion. Why have I got a tail tidy up there? Simple. I was considering buying a tail tidy, and the company that I'm going to be 
well, the company I'm considering getting the carbon fibre thing from is in America, and they don't normally ship out to the UK, and it's going to cost a lot to ship one item. So if I could buy an expensive item and pay a lot for shipping, and then later on buy a cheap item and pay a lot for shipping, or I buy them both together, pay one set, pay one shipping payment, and save money. So that's why that's up there. It's not. That's in the need slash want thing. I don't need it really. That's definitely a want. All in all, that's going to cost me around about fifteen hundred pounds. But that's an estimate. Could be more. Could be less. Hoping for less. Really fucking hoping for less. So yes, that's what's been going on with the bike. If you, if you're on my Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, you'll probably already know some of this because well, that's where I post stuff. If you want to stay more up to date with what's going on, with for example, this project, well, project, get, get over there, you'll find out stuff so much quicker, way before videos come out. Speaking of videos, those of you that said you'd quite like more off the bike vlogs and maybe some mechanical type vlogs, you're gonna get them. Because I can't fucking ride it, can I? So I've gotta get something out of it. So while I'm working on the bike, I will be recording it. They won't be like, how to video, it's not gonna be how to fit the new rear sets, it's gonna be I'm fitting the rear sets and I'll probably talk talk about stuff. So I can guarantee you the way I'm gonna fit the rear sets is not the recommended way. I've, I've, I've got the instructions. Am I gonna read them? So anyway, for the next week, all I'm gonna be doing is working on the bike and editing videos and uploading them. I don't know how many I'm going to get done. don't know when all the parts are going to arrive. Obviously the urgent stuff is arriving now. And then the serious and like need want stuff, they are going to arrive later. So this project could go over a couple of months. Obviously the bike's going to be back on the road within hopefully a week. I should, because like I said, the rear sets is the main thing to get this bike back on the road and usable. Everything else is a, yeah, I can use it without, or I can use it with the broken ones. But I need those rear sets, and I've got the rear sets now. They arrived yesterday, which is annoying, because I had the rear sets and the number plate and no fucking bike. But I've got the bike back, so I'm happy. I'm calm. For the next one, maybe two weeks, there will be a lot of working on the bike videos. After that it'll be hopefully back to the normal videos and occasionally a working on the bike video because obviously like it's like bar ends, levers, tail tidy, they're not anywhere near urgent. I can use what's there. But when they arrive I will take the camera out, sit outside. Hopefully the weather's gonna get better soon because I'm bored of snow. But anyway, I'll be outside, I'll be working on the bike. So if you like that sort of video, working on stuff video, the doing things with my hands, my hands. And stick around and watch a few of them. And if you're new to the channel, by the way, because I noticed I've had a lot of new subscribers since I've crashed my bike, welcome. I don't plan on doing that very often, so if you're only here for the crash, fair enough. But if you like what you've seen since you joined, welcome. I hope you enjoy everything to come. And for the regulars, thanks for your messages. I, I do appreciate them, and you're you're more up to date than anyone. You probably know what happened yesterday, where well, the rest of you don't really know what happened a week ago. So I think I'll end it here. And at the start of next week, there probably won't be a video up on Monday because I'm going to be working on the bike Monday, hopefully mid to the end of the week. Videos will start to appear of me working on the bike. So stick around until then, and I'll catch you all in the next one.